Now I would like to welcome you all to our Young People's Meeting for this afternoon. And our first item will be the children from Toronto and Pusledge. songs to sing about the Beatitudes and they'll be reciting the verses in French. Thank you. 
Voyant la foule, Jésus monta sur la montagne. Et après qu'il se fut assis, ses disciples s'approchèrent de lui. Ayant ouvert la bouche, il les enseigna et dit, « Heureux les pauvres en esprit, car le royaume des cieux est à eux. » Réjouissez-vous et soyez dans l'allégresse, parce que votre récompense sera grande dans les cieux, car c'est ainsi qu'on a persécuté les prophètes qui ont été avant. Most history's most courageous giants. 
His life spanned at least five heads of state. He began his diplomatic service shortly after he graduated from high school, and his governmental service covered approximately 60 years. Kings valued his counsel. Government leaders treasured his judgment and sought out his wisdom. When his nation fell to a foreign power, this valued Secretary of State was amazingly appointed to another term by that conquering power. Thank you, Danielle, for uh, giving us the first part of that presentation. Now I would like to call up Ina and Vera, and they have a piano song for us.
thank you for that song. It's always nice to see families praising God together. Now, I would like to call up Julia, and she has the second part of our presentation for this afternoon. Standing firm. 118, Daniel was taken captive by the Babylonians when King Nebuchadnezzar captured Jerusalem in 605 BC. Nebuchadnezzar took a number of Hebrews captive, and some of them he planned to educate in the principles and policies of Babylon and install them as puppet rulers over Jerusalem. Suddenly, gradually, cunningly, Nebuchadnezzar plotted to change their way of thinking. His goal was to shift their allegiance from, allegiance from the God of Israel to the gods of Babylon. Early in his captivity, Daniel was ushered into Babylon's banquet hall to eat from the king's table at a lavish feast thrown in honor of Bel Marduk, the chief Babylonian god. The food of the feast had been offered to idols. To eat it would be to accept idolatry and acknowledge the superiority of the Babylonian gods to his god. Also, some of the food was unclean. For Daniel to eat it would be to reject his Hebrew heritage. There was also the issue of health. Daniel realized that the rich, unhealthful food would rapidly destroy his health and reduce his physical powers, while also impairing his moral judgment. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wines which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Daniel refused to com compromise his integrity to gain the king's favor or avoid his displeasure. Fast forward into the future. Daniel's earlier decision was not an isolated instance. It wasn't a once-in-a-lifetime kind of decision. Standing firm was part of his character, part of his spiritual life. Daniel is now middle-aged. King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream, a dream of a great tree that is chopped down. Nebuchadnezzar is confused about the dream and wonders what it means. Daniel comes before the king, the great monarch, the most powerful man of the then-known world. O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. What courage, what decisiveness, what firmness. To look into the eyes of the most powerful man in the world and earnestly call him to repentance. Fast forward into the future again. Daniel is now in his late 80s. Evil men have plotted against him to trap him, and they have influenced King Darius to pass a decree to make it unlawful to pray to any other power except the king. This is a direct violation of the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper room, with three window, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times a day and prayed. We never stand taller than we were on our knees. As a result of his singular commitment to God, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. In the face of death, Daniel stood tall because Daniel stood firm. At 18, he refused to compromise. In middle age, he refused to compromise. In his 80s, he refused to compromise. Daniel recognized that compromise is fatal to a vibrant spiritual life. Author Samuel Johnson wrote, the chains of habit are generally too small to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. Thank you for that, Julia. And may we also never compromise in our spiritual lives as well. Um, in that case, we will have a trumpet song for now.
Thank you for that item. And now I would like to call up Brother Larry, who will be playing Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Presentation this afternoon. Bowing low. The strength to stand tall is not some mental toughness. It is strength of character rooted in a relationship with God through prayer. Daniel had it. He stood tall because he bowed low. At each crossroads in his life, we see him bowing low. In his youth, when confronted with the threat of death, we see Daniel. Seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning this secret, so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Later in life, when faced with the lion's den, Daniel found, is found, as was his custom, praying three times a day with his windows open. Still later, under a new king, Darius, Daniel is found praying that God will deliver his people from captivity. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth and ashes, and I prayed to the Lord my God. Daniel's life was saturated with prayer. He bowed low so he could stand tall. When mountain climbers reach the summit of some of the world's greatest peaks, such as Mount Everest or Mount McKinley, if the winds are fierce, the only way to keep from getting blown away is to get on their knees. If you want to stand tall on the mountain top with God, you must bow low. We can never stand firm until we bow low. What is our prayer life like? Are we bowing low day by day before God? Thank you for that presentation, Johnny. And now I would like to ask Pendo to come up and do his song. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
In Belshazzar's banquet hall, he is still standing. Faced with the threat of the lion's den, he is still standing. If in these end times we stand firm, bow low, and hang on, we too will still stand tall. Thank you for that. Now I would like to call up Eunice, and she has a song on the violin for us. Into how many 
pieces was Jesus seamless gar garment cut among the Roman soldiers. Yes, you're correct. It wasn't cut. Yes. It was never cut. <laughs> the Egyptians thought Sarah was related to Abraham in what way? The Egyptians thought Sarah was related to Abraham in what way? God, God told Adam and Eve not to eat what kind of fruit? The Bible um, tells God told Adam and Eve not to eat what kind of fruit? Zachary? Jacob? Yeah, it doesn't say what food it was. Quote Philippians 4 verse 4. Quote Philippians 4 verse 4. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yes, John the Baptist. Genesis to Malachi is Matthew 2. Revelation. Yes, Revelation. What preacher was upset because his preaching caused a whole, a whole city to repent? Yes. Who had shoes that lasted for 40 years and did not wear out? Yes, children of Israel. Who owned dishes that were made of pure gold? that were made of pure gold. He was a king. Yes, Solomon. In the book of Ruth, what was Naomi's other name? In the book of Ruth, what was Naomi's other name? In what book of the Bible do we find mention of stars singing? Job. Yes, Job. The Bible character Zaphonath Pania was known by another famous name. What was the name? Joseph. Yes, Joseph. What is the shortest chapter in the Bible? Yes, Psalm 117. How many books are in the New Testament? You have to say oh, 20, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, Amen. Yes, amen. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for that quiz. You really had us thinking there on a few of those questions. Uh, now I would like to call up Betty and she has a song for us.
thank you for that lovely song, Veda. And now, I, for our final item for the Saint People's Meeting, I would like to call up the youth.